Okay, here we are with part two of our deep core basics. This time we're gonna try and challenge your core by moving a limb. We're gonna start with knee floats, then we're gonna progress that on to knee floats and slide. And again, Elise is gonna be cueing Pam to help you follow along and do it yourself at home. Listen to her tips. We're gonna go through a little bit of the basics first. If you've missed the first one, check out part one that drills down on what to do with your pelvic floor and your breathing and getting everything working. We're gonna to touch on a little bit on that and then we're gonna move straight to the knee float. So we're gonna be going through your leg floats, which is essentially learning to maintain your neutral spine, but adding some movement around that neutral spine now, and that will make it a little bit harder to control through your core muscles. So we'll go through, um we learned last time so we're going to go through finding your neutral spine again first then engaging both those core muscles your pelvic floor and your ta that we were talking about and then we're going to start to add some movement at the legs so let's go back to putting our triangle on our hip bones and our index fingers down onto our pubic bone and then making sure that our triangle is nice and parallel with the floor good we want to make sure that our ribs aren't popping up in that movement as well and again, we have a little bit of a curve in behind our spine there, which is good. Now that we've got that position, we're gonna try and maintain that position through movement. We wanna have a little bit of a feel now where we're gonna be resting our hands as we start to introduce the leg floats. So we're gonna have our fingertips just inside our hip bones. You're gonna be feeling for the tone of those abdominal muscles again. And then what else I want you to do there is I want you to use the knuckles of your hands to feel what the pelvis bone is doing. Now what we're looking for is whether the pelvis is gonna start shifting side to side as we start to lift one leg up, or whether it's starting to tilt forward and backwards, and that's gonna indicate that you're not actually maintaining that neutral spine, okay? So first step is we're gonna engage our pelvic floor and our TA again. So you should be able to inhale to switch those muscles on and hold them. Now we're gonna use the exhale breath as we start to lift our leg up. So inhale, set up pelvic floor and TA, you should be able to feel that. And then as you exhale, keeping your knee at a right angle, lift up and over the top of your hip. We take an inhale breath as we then place that foot back down on the ground. We're gonna alternate sides. So on the next exhale, we pick up that left knee, lifting it up towards your chest and then inhale, coming back down. Good, I'm gonna get you to keep on moving through. I want you to focus as you're lifting each leg and transferring that weight, what you can feel through your hands. So concentrating on, are you keeping the same tone in your abdominals throughout the movement? Are you losing tone as you shift between the sides? Or is your pelvis moving too much when you lift one leg? which is not uncommon. So I want you to concentrate a little bit harder on this side. As you lift, let's try and keep your pelvis perfectly nice and still, trying to avoid that rotational movement. That's better, good. And then inhaling to come back down. Lovely work. All right, so this is our option one. Once this option becomes super nice and super easy, you're maintaining your pelvic floor and the TA the whole time, you're not losing it and you're not moving your pelvis around too much when we do it, then we can start to add a little bit of a leg extension in, which makes it a little bit harder for us to control your neutral spine. Okay, so the second thing we're gonna work on is going from the knee float to a float and extend. Now, these exercises are really important for people who are in acute back pain or they've just had a back injury, they've got a lot of muscle spasm, these are the sort of exercises we give people to try and reduce that and get them out of that space. So not just to help with their core basics, but to try and reduce that pain. Now, if you're one of those people who's got problems or struggling with holding their breath, listen to Elise's cueing on when to breathe in and out, depending on when you move your leg. This is when your breathing becomes a little bit more important and we wanna try and engage your obliques running from the bottom of your ribs down to your hip bones to make sure that we're not starting to flare through our rib cage and then arching through our lower back a little bit. So for this one, what I'm gonna get you to do is I'm gonna switch your hand placement. I want your thumbs to be on the base of your ribs. So up through here, good. And then your fingers, we're gonna go down onto the hip bones. Now, I want you, as you take a breath in, so we're gonna take a big breath in, don't worry about your core at the moment. Big breath in, you're gonna feel your rib cage. 
it. And then as you breathe out, I want you to breathe out through pursed lips. Imagine you're breathing out through, you're gonna breathe out through a straw or you're blowing out some birthday candles and you're actually trying to slide your ribs down towards your hips, engaging those obliques. Good, take a breath in for me again. Feel those ribs expand. And then as you breathe out, pursed lips, pull your rib cage down towards your hips. So we're tying in a different muscle group again here. Good, now we're gonna pull it all together. We're gonna to pull the TA, pelvic floor, your obliques, and some of that movement in as well. So we go back to that neutral spine. So making sure we're in neutral, soft curve underneath the back. We're changing up our breathing now. So we're gonna take an inhale as we set up, turn pelvic floor on, turn TA on, and lift one leg up into tabletop all at once. Good, nice and slow. As we exhale, we think about blowing out those birthday candles, reaching that leg out, keeping those core muscles on. That's really good. Breathe in to come back up. Good. Breathe out, slide those ribs down towards your hips, place that foot down on the mat. Good, now we're gonna go other side. Inhaling, lifting that leg up into tabletop, keep everything nice and still. Exhale, slide your ribs down towards your hips. Good, breathe in, pulling back up to tabletop. Good, breathe out, place it down. Nice work. So the lower we go with those legs as we keep on moving through, the harder it becomes to stop our ribs from flaring and to stop our lower back from arching. So what we wanna do in the initial phases as we're learning this movement is get a really good feel through those fingertips at which point does that gap between our ribs and our hips start to increase and that's when we're taking it a fraction too far and we wanna pull back a little bit. So we're gonna do a couple more just focusing on making sure that you're doing a short enough range that you're actually keeping that control of that neutral spine. So inhaling again as we go up, try not to flare the ribs here either. Good, breathe out. We keep those core muscles on, pull your ribs to your hips. Control probably finishes about there for Pam. Breathe in as we come back up to tabletop and breathe out slow and control, place it down. Good, all right, left side one more time. Inhale, tummy muscles on. Good, exhale, pressing out and extending. Good, inhale, keep scooping those tummy muscles on and then exhale, placing it down. Good.